everyone, and welcome to the 3.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. <clears throat> In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, AI Augmented 3D Visualization in the Metaverse via Scientific Virtual Observatories. Our speakers are Dr. Andrew Stricker, a.k.a. Spinoza Cunell, and Dr. Cynthia Colloin, a.k.a. Lear Lobo. Andrew is an Education Innovation Analyst with Air University's LeMay Center for Doctrine Development and Education. He conducts research in the future, the cognitive sciences and artificial intelligence for professional military education, and the collaborative design of assistive immersive 3D virtual and augmented reality simulations for complex problem solving among teams. Cynthia is a professor at Parker University in Dallas, Texas, and a VR researcher who taught 55 university classes in virtual worlds. Her team won the $25,000 grand prize for the Mars Expedition Strategy Challenge, and she received the Thinkero Award for Virtual World Education. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC21. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the session. Hey, thank you, Galen. And Andy and I are excited to be here. He's going to be doing a lot of the talking, and I'm going to be driving the speakeasy and chiming in with ideas. And I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Andy, over to you. Thank you, Lear. It's um, a pleasure to be able to chat uh, about the work we've been doing um, with um, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, with our prototyping of learning simulations. And today, what we thought we might do is, is talk a little bit about how we have um, have linked up some of the tool sets that we use from um, AWS uh, AI, different capabilities with our, our simulations and the interactive uh, parts that we, we use those simulations with uh, the people that uh, mostly are, are uh, students <laughs> and, they, and they try out, um, you know, the, the, and give us a lot of opportunities to see how the data is uh, useful in giving feedback to them as they go through the simulations. Um, this slide that you see here uh, sort of highlights a really popular thing that we've noticed across uh, various universities and research centers, and they're called uh, virtual observatories. And these are basically hubs that support various uh, forms of science, whether it's in astronomy or biomedical informatics. Um, there's different uh, applications of these in physics with the federal laboratories. And what we just feel like that with the metaverse, there's a tremendous opportunity to uh, employ these kinds of visualization technologies uh, in pursuit of science and also, of course, with education. So one of the things that um, uh, has very, been proven to be very extremely helpful is when you can actually model uh, complex relationships and show the relationships of the variables to help explain phenomena. And Nancy Nasserian, who's now at Harvard, did a lot of the pioneering work in model-based reasoning that uh, we've benefited from over the years. These are, if you look at the bottom of the slide, there's two different examples that are uh, popularly known. One is a recent uh, endeavor that was published, uh, matter of fact, uh, on the 8th of December this year, about the 3D visualization that they did with um, um, a kind of a, a observatory collection of a supernova, data from a supernova. And what they learned through, from these visualizations is a new understanding of a phenomenon because you, you see things differently as you're able to see the dimensionality. And the one on the right side it was NASA, uh, NASA JPL's effort working with MIT uh, to create a data visualization of the universe. Very ambitious. And these models, by the way, require uh, supercomputers to formulate uh, the structures and, and benefit from it. Now, what we do, for example, on the, uh, the JPL model, 
uh, we we bring uh, simple versions of the models into our simulation, and and one in particular is with our Mars expedition. And basically, the whole expedition is a set of clues that you have to uh, decipher to interpret uh, what in the world you're looking at. And we've had a lot of fun with this with uh, our participants that have gone through the simulation. Lear, do you have uh, anything you'd like to share with that? Absolutely. Well, I had a little more wordiness because I know it's hard to read our slides, right? <laughs> so I, I I gathered the the slide content for you, and then I wanted to explain that we yes we simplify the model in world, and then we also think about its complexity, and we gather all kinds of data that we're then going to go through a process that we're going to illustrate in this talk. Okay, and if you go to the next slide. What, we, what we've done is we've put together in our hub uh, various tools, and the tools um, support the 3D simulations and visualizations. So um, I'll, I'll work my way from the top row across down to the bottom from left to right, but composite-wise, the hub um, that, that supports our AI res resources and tools are uh, accessible through the web and we have these tools uh, where you can go and explore in the uh, new planetarium that we uh, have uh, shown here at this conference in honor of um, Dr. Barbara Truman and I just like to share that Dr. Barbara Truman uh, uh, with you know our group from Virtual Harmony was very involved and uh, helping us with development of these resources and tools uh, with, along with Lear and uh, and the others from uh, Virtual Harmony. The, uh, um, and from the hub, you can access, access a, a bibliography. Now this bibliography that we, we use, we've been tracking uh, research uh, and publications in artificial intelligence uh, for quite quite some time and when we see something that's related to the work that we do we um, um, create a synopsis of that work and we cross index across several categories subcategories where you can do uh, fairly involved searches and we include information about the uh, the nature of the research and so forth and we have several people from across higher education industry and the government and one of the things I do want to highlight is is a disclaimer. Uh, we we have people from the military that have come in and use our resources, but um, they, they, the government does not um, uh, officially, uh, uh, you know, endorse the the the, the, the resources. But they uh, but we do have uh, our students in the past who and and even currently access some of these uh, tool sets. So if you go to the, the next um, um, part of this uh, AI resources, you'll see a picture of our simulations. And so what we've done, we've, we started out with the Mars expedition simulation with AI tools, and then we, we, we went to um, our Grand Prix environment. And uh, we were tracking data with the virtual Grand Prix races and then it wasn't it was it was about a couple months later we found out that the actual uh, pre circuit is using AI <laughs> so that was kind of a fun thing to find out that um, you know the application of, of AI and machine learning uh, techniques is being used by the, uh, the the Grand Prix circuit we we also do assessments so our AI tools give us uh, assistance with um, feedback to people after they they go through a simulation um, they they uh, collect, we, have, we collect enormous amounts of data and then we feed it to the uh, the AI engines and they give us estimates of where uh, we can expect their progress and development to take place so we've got these developmental models that we've been constructing uh, and we're very interested in this from a professional development level. So a lot of the assessments we make, we try to help people understand across critical thinking skills and problem solving abilities, what it might look like across a, a lifespan of development. So this is very important in the, in the field right now with professional 
uh, developments to help people understand the nature of what it looks like to evolve in your cognitive and complex reasoning skills, in, including moral ethical reasoning. So we do assess those levels uh, as well. And then at the bottom row, you'll see we've got a blog. And so we, we generate a blog each week. We've been doing this now for, I guess, Lear, for about a, um, almost, well, we're going in our second year in January. <laughs> so we've got, a, we've got a, quite a collection of uh, uh, blog, weekly blog topics. And we generated a document that has several chapters and an index of the, each of the blogs as they relate to a framework. So we help people uh, who are brand new to artificial intelligence and machine learning understand we've got several topics that basically describe, you know, what is artificial intelligence compared to machine learning. And we relate that to the areas of research in cognitive sciences and several other disciplines that are uh, employing the use of um, AI and ML. And yeah, so, Andy, on that yeah. thought there, I'll chime in. I, yes. My students love the um, the bibliography site and the research sites because um, we use them in my business intelligence class, in my decision support systems, and then also in um, I teach an advanced topics and databases where we're, we think about NoSQL da databases and how all of these different technologies integrate. So thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. And, the, you know, that as, as um, you, you've seen and I've seen with um, people that have been using our resources, uh, they're from all over at, at various levels from masters to doctoral and postdoctoral um uh, efforts and they give us wonderful feedback uh, and we we've, we've truly benefited from it and then the next one over at the bottom row is our seminar so we do have uh, small modular seminars that we've we've put together over over the past couple years and they uh, talk about some of the applications of these areas that um, you know are interesting for people in certain domains and this brings it uh, more to the forefront uh, because a lot of people you know when, when they're first getting becoming aware of artificial intelligence machine learning they're, they're thinking about okay well what can this do for me in my particular domain so you know we bring a lot of examples up uh, in medical practice um, and uh, industry uh, and, and also including the military then the, the learning neural net is something that um, we've been working with now for quite some time, but we, we, we run a very small neural net on our servers, but we also uh, tap into um, the uh, Amazon uh, tool set. And if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the uh, more advanced work. And I'm going to jump into the <laughs> probably more detail than you care to hear about in a, in a, in a minute or two, but uh, we'll just walk you through what we do with uh, some of the neural net processing. And then finally, on the other block there, we have the atmospherics. And this is where we translate the the, the nature of what's being done in AI ML for senior executives. And so the atmospheric site tracks emerging breakthroughs and capabilities as it's being, um, uh, as we become aware of them. And it's got automatic trackers that basically call from published resources that get, um, you know, put on uh, uh, for sharing. So, okay, Sam, you can go to the next one. I have Somebody, one thing to add here, Andy. Yep. We have six minutes left and, yep, and 17 slides, so I just wanted to give perfect. you a heads up. <laughs> I couldn't ask for a perfect time. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll, we'll, we'll move right along. Um, this is our architecture, and I think some of you may have seen this before, but uh, this supports the entire background of uh, virtual harmony and the various uh, parts of the hub, as we call it. And over on the uh, right-hand side is the uh, the flow that uh, is used uh, when we do some of the larger uh, machine learning work with SageMaker. So this is SageMaker is a, a really nice uh, uh, set of capabilities that's offered by Amazon. And uh, I have to tell you, it is very, very uh, uh, intensive and so we, we we turn it on when we need to use it <laughs> next slide please Sam. so 
So here's what it looks like when we when we turn it on. We 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 uh, we set up um, the uh, uh, what we are going to train our our models on with um, the console that is offered, and from there uh, we we can track. Uh, all the different components as we set the the machine learning flow in place. And usually the machine learning flow, like when we've done some of our simulations in the past, we'll run it for about a week. And um, but you know some of you that do this work, you know that's a pretty these are very large virtual machines, very high computational. So um, it's about all we can do to keep it running for a week. <laughs> Next slide, please. So, go. okay, good. So, um, this this is what um, it looks like when we first set up our Jupyter notebook, and we load example data in. And basically, what we're we're doing here with the example data, and this kind of example data can come from the earlier uh, prototypes and data we've collected, and then we basically want to train and and validate and test. Uh, the model and basically what you're doing with this capability is you're generating enough confidence in the what is associated and related uh, to help explain certain parts of your uh, framework that you're wanting the AI ML to give you assistance with in predicting where people are going to fall. Like if you're using it for a learning environment, learning simulation, you would use this to help you uh, give feedback to students based on the predicted levels of understanding or, or levels of performance. So next slide, please. Then. And so here, um, uh, it, the next part of this of this flow is we're um, getting ready now in, with this code to move the data into cloud storage. And these um, types of uh, data sets uh, can be uh, when you first start out fairly reasonable, but um, they 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 become very massive. And so, like if you're working as you can imagine with government data sets, uh, they're humongous. And so, uh, cloud storage is is really essential in order to be able to do this. Next one, please, Sin. So when you when you get your your data loaded into the cloud, then you you basically cycle through uh, the model and using the data to train it, and and basically uh, it's it's going through calculated weights associated with uh, you know what parts of of the variables contribute to a good reasonable prediction, and they and they and they give you. And they give you, you know, uh, basically confidence factors associated with the model and how um, useful it's expected to be in helping you to actually give you the predictions that you're looking for. Next one, please, Sin. So here, um, after you run the the data through the training and validation process, you get basically uh, a report generated. And it gives you uh, several metrics associated with the model. And at the very top, you'll see the overall accuracy expected with the model. Now, you know, here in, in the one I'm showing you, you know, uh, there is a, a 0.86 uh, uh, rating, you know, so that's really good. <laughs> so that's that's what you want to see. Next, please. Sin. And you also can uh, go ahead and plot out uh, the kinds of um, uh, expected predictive strengths associated with the model uh, in, in terms of uh, you know looking at what you would expect uh, it w if it was actually employed. And this gives you again a greater confidence. Or right. most most often, what you're going to see here, and when you first do this, is several areas that or can't really uh, uh, be explained by the, uh, the machine learning process, and you have to go back and clean the data and tweak it and work it. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I hope I, I don't want to really lead anyone to think that this is a straightforward process. You have to iterate back and forth uh, in cleaning your data. Next one, please, Sin. And this this uh, final output from. Um, SageMaker shows you a, a cutoff in loss functions 
And this now what we do is we take this type of data and we feed that into uh, the algorithmic responses in the 3D learning simulations. And this is the kind of information then that gets translated into uh, helping the algorithms uh, be able to give the feedback. So this screen here that Lear has brought up is an actual, oops, you went back. Can you go forward again? Sure, we're out of time though, Andy, So, but go right ahead. Okay, I have I, I have on my clocks in uh, nine minutes. So, are you saying to stop? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're supposed. To, well, no, we we're, we're going to wrap. So, I was going to go ahead with the slides, um, because you have some cool ways of looking at the results right here that show the inputs, the processing, and the outputs. Did you want to finish with that slide? Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure if, if you're if we're out of time, we should just quit then if that's if that's what you're saying if we're out of time. No, so. Well, I wanted to wrap on this really cool content you have back here because this really illustrates the power of what you're trying to convey. I just love these slides. And yeah, we were supposed to stop at 10 minutes till I'm sorry, Andy. No problem. When we get together, we have such a great time. We did a talk once that was a five minute Ignite where we had 15 seconds per slide. That was a wild time. <laughs> anyway, so any final thoughts, Andy, on this process? Where are we going with this in the future? Well, um, the, um, you know, my, my train of thought is lost, but- uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, the um, um, probably the best thing for people to do if if if, if they're interested in, in in the work is to maybe reach out to us and we can sp spend some time going into some of the benefits um, you know that um, you know what it represents for mixing you know metaverse 3D environments with the tool sets of AI and machine learning, uh, particularly if you're educators and you want to actually give you know uh, really considerable precision in the feedback as people are using 3D simulations and 3D models. So thank you for very much for your time. <laughs> okay. Hey, Andy, we had some wonderful comments. I just wanted to close on this. Kayaker and the others, I don't know if you've seen the text chat, but they are stomping and said, show the slides. We love your slides. Wonderful <laughs> session. So I want to thank you for all your support. It, you know, you probably did missed it in the beginning, but I explain to them that you do everything. You are a multi-talented, multifaceted person who's an expert at 3D Mesh, as well as programming, cognitive sciences, innovation analyst, and a dozen other skills. He textures, he scripts, he does it all, folks. So um, I am blessed to have such a wonderful teammate. Thank you, Andy. Thank You're, you, everyone. I, okay. Well, I'm very, very grateful to be part of this of this conference. Thank I'm you. sorry that I have to. We have to end it, you guys. This was fascinating. Thank you, Andrew and Cynthia, for an informative and interesting presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out conference.opensimulator.org to see what is coming up on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session which will begin at 4 o'clock p.m. in this keynote region and is entitled Resmala Composer, a proven rapid content creation application for Open Simulator. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 21 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the Hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and the audience.